Let's make our declaration of increase in this year of increase. Are you ready? Say with me, I confess today that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. In him, I have life, his abundant life. The Lord is my light and strength. As he is, so has he made me. By his spirit, I increase in word and in wisdom, in faith and in favor. The Lord has said, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed. So I can boldly say, my God shall increase me more and more. What I place in God's hands grows into overflow. Though I begin small, my end shall greatly increase. In this year of increase, I grow in grace and in strength to be all that God wants me to be. In Jesus' name, Amen! God bless you and kindly be seated in God's presence. Well, thank, we want to thank the music ministry, the arts ministry for that wonderful birthday celebration of my beloved wife, Joy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And uh, it was a surprise uh, for all of us. And we thank God for the uh, uh, sense of uh, initiative uh, and, and, uh, and the precise way that they did it. You deserve all of it. Amen. Well, uh, today is Communion Sunday, and, and so we'll be celebrating communion. By the way, the full screen is now in, so I've been talking about it for a while. And uh, the, the guys are still trying to master what to do with it, but I think it looks good. Don't you think so? I hope your money was in there. Amen. So today is Communion, so we're going to... Uh, have communion at the end of my preaching and so I just want you to prepare your heart uh, as we engage God in communion every time we come uh, to have communion it's a moment where we have a special encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ he himself said that we do this in remembrance of him so anytime we partake of communion we expect God to do something special in our lives we expect God for a breakthrough for favor for increase on every side and I believe this morning something special is going to happen to you something supernatural is going to happen to you the power of God will be revealed in your life and over your life and God will turn things around in your life amen well uh, before we went into Easter uh, and by the way, we had a great Easter weekend, uh, the Good Friday service, Easter Sunday, and uh, the, the, the most beautiful of all was Easter Sunday evening, uh, He is Risen concert. Those of you who were here, I suppose that you were greatly blessed. Those of you who were not here, I suppose you were doing something useful somewhere, and, and, and that you were blessed there too. But Sunday night was a blast in this place. It was just amazing. It was just beautiful. And we want to celebrate uh, our music and arts ministry. Let's clap for all of them. God bless you. God bless you so much uh, for your dedication and for the spirit of excellence uh, that you, you manifest in your work. And, and Sunday night was one of those remarkable things that... God uses human beings to do uh, for his glory. Amen. Anyway, before we got into Easter, I preached on God is able. And, and then I, I preached on God is faithful. I did part one and two. And, and so today I'm preaching on God is good. God is good. It is a statement that we make very often we say God is good and we respond all the time. All the time God is good. And, and sometimes, you know, we say these things um, as a slogan, but we don't say them with meaning 
And, and so today I'm going to uh, take us through what it means when we say God is good. In which way is he good? And, and how, do we, uh, how do we declare his goodness effectively? Somebody say God is good. Do you really believe that? You believe God is good? How many times? How many times? Is he good today? Good yesterday? Will be good tomorrow? He's good all the time. He's good all the time. God is good. God is good. Psalm 106 and verse 1. And it says, Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Throughout the Old Testament, that phrase recurs over and over. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. It was the national declaration of Israel. It was their number one praise and worship song. When they went into battle, uh, they would be singing because he's good and his mercies endure forever. In the temple, they will sing, the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. It was a part of their declaration because it underlies a very important aspect of who God is. We can know God, we can know his power, we can know God is great, we can know God is, is, uh, is the creator, but if somebody is a creator and he's very powerful and he's not good, it's not good. It's not good to have a very powerful person who is not good. So in addition to all that we know about God and his power and his greatness and his magnificence, what makes everything valuable is his goodness. Because when he takes his goodness out, his power will be dangerous against us. His goodness makes everything come together. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. So in what ways is God good? First, God is good in himself. God is good in himself, in his nature, in his character. God does not derive his goodness from us, neither does he derive it from his other creation. God is good by himself within himself so his goodness is from himself and it manifests in so many ways god's goodness manifests in so many ways and i'll talk about three of them first is his purity god is pure he has no moral weakness he has no moral weakness you know when powerful people have a moral weakness, their power works to our disadvantage. If somebody is very powerful but has no goodness in them, their power works to our disadvantage. If they have a moral weakness, then they will use their power to execute the moral weakness. So, if somebody is very powerful, naturally, and he likes, uh, if he's a man, he's a president, he's a king, and he likes women, he's going to use his power that, to execute that moral weakness. He's going to take people's wives from them. He's going to take uh, people's things from them. If he's greedy, he's going to use his power to take people's properties from them. So power is great, but if there is no goodness in the power, the power becomes a liability. And that is why God's goodness is so powerful. And he's pure. God has no moral weakness. There is no danger that God will abuse his power. Because he has no moral goodness. He's pure. He's good. Secondly, God is good in himself. Because he is right all the time. 
He is right all the time. He makes no mistakes. Can you imagine somebody who is so powerful, who is prone to making mistakes? You shoot a, a, a missile in the air, powerful weapon, then you make a mistake and it hits the wrong person. That's dangerous. But God is good. He makes no mistakes. He's pure and he is right. And thirdly, God is kind. His acts are benevolent. He does things for benefit, for our benefit. God is not cruel. He does not take pleasure in misery. God's goodness is sometimes referred to in the scriptures as his tender mercies. His tender mercies. God is good through and through in his person, in his personality. And that is why we can trust his power that it will not be used capriciously. It will not be used wrongly. It will not be used to satisfy a moral weakness in God. And it will not be used to do cruel things against us because God is kind. God is good. But not only is God good in himself, God is good toward us. He is good toward us. His goodness is not only in himself, but his goodness manifests. He acts out his goodness. As a matter of fact, he created us out of his goodness. We are the product of his goodness. Even when we are disobedient to him, he still desires good things for us. In Jeremiah 29, verse 10 and 11, this is what the Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amazing. This is a prophecy God is giving to Judah. When they have acted in disobedience, they have disobeyed God for years, hundreds of years. He sends prophet after prophet to warn them, repent of your ways, repent of your ways. And they would go after idols and they would go uh, turn against God and turn away from the Lord. And the Lord will warn them and he will send prophets to warn them. And then finally God says, you know what? I'm going to allow the Babylonians to to teach you something you should have learned otherwise. So Babylon is going to take you, but afterwards, I'll bring you back to the same land. And then he says something very interesting, that in spite of the fact that you are going into captivity, I have thoughts towards you, and they are thoughts of good and not of evil. I want to have a great future for you. So although it will seem as if what is going to happen to them is bad, God says, it is happening out of my goodness. So even when we are disobedient to God, when we fail, his goodness never fails. When we turn away from him, his goodness never fails. Even when we're going through hardship, his goodness is always present. So he says, you will go, I will bring you back, because I have good plans for you. I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking good thoughts towards you. I want things to be well with you. I want to give you a future. But you are a very disobedient people. You're going to go through hardship. But I have good plans towards you. The goodness of the Lord never fails. It never fails. God always has good thoughts towards you. So some of us may be in a bad state in our life maybe because we did something very terrible and we're going through terrible things and you think oh maybe God doesn't love me again God's goodness never fails even in Babylon he loves you in captivity he loves you even when you are fighting him he loves you and he's good 
towards you. God is good towards us. He has good plans for us and he does good things for us. You have to constantly remember God has good plans for you. God has good plans for me. And God is doing good things for me. No matter where you are in your life, remember this always. God has good plans for you. Even when you have bad plans for yourself, God has good plans for you. Because God is good through and through at all times and in all situations. Psalm 107 verses 1 and 2. Psalm 107 verses 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You see that phrase again. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. What are the redeemed supposed to say? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure forever so the bible is talking to the redeemed who are the redeemed the redeemed are those who have been delivered or redeemed or set free from the kingdom of darkness and been born again into the kingdom of light sometimes we call them believers other times we call them children of god sometimes we call them purely christians or saints of god the redeemed are those who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And the passage says the redeemed must say something. They must say that God is good. But before they say God is good, they must believe that God is good. The redeemed must believe that God is good. You must believe it. God is good. God is good. God is good. You must believe it. And then after you have believed it, you must declare it that God is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. God is good. So when you're going through pain and you're going through difficulty, the words that come out of your mouth would be, God is good. When you are down and you don't know what to do, you just say, God is good. You lost all your money right now. God is good. Thieves broke into your house, stole your precious goods. God is good. Let the redeemed constantly say God is good that was Job's attitude when he lost everything he still says God is good I don't understand it all but God is good I don't know why I've lost everything but God is good the goodness of the Lord must never be doubted we must never doubt it and it is when we believe he's good and we declare he's good that we experience the goodness. So the redeemed of the Lord must believe God is good. And they must declare that God is good. You have to make it a practice in your life to constantly affirm God is good. You have to. Because no matter what comes against you, the redeemed might say, God is good. 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 I don't have all the answers, but God is good. I don't know how things are going to turn out, but God is good. I don't understand what is happening right now, but God is good. It's been a tough year, but God is good. That is our declaration. The redeem of the Lord 
must say so. We must declare that. And why must we declare that? Not only is God good, but if you come to the New Testament, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know. Everybody say, I know. Somebody say, I know. What do you know? <laughs> and we know. Somebody say, I know. Say, I know. I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. I know without any shadow of doubt. And we know. 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 What do we know? And we know that all things work together for good. For good. For good. To those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. We know. Not some things. All things. Now think about it. All things. All things. All things. All things. Including the bad things. Including people's jealousy and envy. Including people's hatred. Including people's cruelty. All things. We know that all things, he didn't say all things are good. All things work together. Work together for good to those who are called as, according to his prayer. What does it tell us? That God uses all kinds of things to work out his good purpose in our lives. God is unlimited in what he can use to make us experience his goodness. We have limitations on the things we can use or influence. But God is not limited. He can use the affairs of men. He can use governments. He can use powerful people. He can use little people. He can use the elements. He can use the sun. He can use the moon. He can use the stars. He can use rivers. He can use the sea. He can use stones. He can use sand. He can use all things. All things. Working together. All things. Working together. God makes things that you think don't fit, fit. He picks from there and picks from there and picks from there and mixes it up and produce good. It's like a typical Ghanaian cook who uses stinky fish, stinky meat, Stinky bush meat, hot pepper, slimy okra. Each one of them in their own right, undesirable. But the Ghanaian cook can make all things, all things. Stinky fish work together for your good. Dead grass cutter work together for your good. Slimy okra, hot pepper. If the Ghanaian cook can make all things work together in your fufu bowl. Then what about the creator of the universe? He can use people's stinky attitudes. Stinky, stinky attitude. Hot pepper. Harsh realities of life. He can use things that really make you feel just like nothing. And he puts it all together and what comes out of it is better than ebunebunu is better than okro soup is better because god makes all things all things 
He doesn't leave anything behind. All things work together for your good. The house you were born in, your father who gave birth to you, your mother who gave birth to you, your neighborhood, the school you went to, that school prefect that didn't like you. God is making all things, all things, your experience, bad experiences, negative experiences, painful experiences. He puts them all together. And by the time he's finished, it is working for your good. And that is why the Bible says, we know, we know, we know, we know. I want you to know that you know that we know that all things are working together for your good. God uses all things. God's purposes overrule all other schemes and devices. God is able to work our present sufferings to our good. He overrules all the schemes of men. And Joseph understood that. Joseph understood that. You know the story of Joseph? Started well, coat of many colors, brothers jealous, caught him, sold him into slavery. Deceived his father that he was dead. A wild animal had killed him. Went to Potiphar's house, blackmailed. Went to prison house, forgotten. How can these things work together for good? Then he comes up, he becomes prime minister. Then his brothers who sold him come to Egypt looking for corn. There they see Joseph. What a scare it will be when your enemy who tried to destroy you sees you in power. And at that time you can do them bad. Joseph's brothers for all their lives were scared. Because they, they felt as a natural human being this guy is going to use, is going to do pay us back sometime. And the reason why he's not paying us back is because our father is still alive. So, their father died. They said, whoa, the protection is gone. Now all the bad that Joseph has been incubating will come. So they went to Joseph and told a lie. These brothers were liars. They lied from beginning. They are still lying. They said, Joseph, by the way, our father before he died gave us a last wish. That you should not mistreat us. <laughs> what kind of brothers are they? You lied and sold him into slavery. Now you are lying again. And so they say, you know, our father says you shouldn't mistreat us. You, you should treat us well. Before he dies, his last wish. <laughs> Joseph understood it. And this is what he said in Genesis chapter 50 verse 19. Joseph said to them, 19 and 20, Genesis 50, 19 and 20. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Are, are you getting it? Joseph is saying, you, you had a meaning, you meant it for evil, but God also meant it for good. In other words, actually, what you did was God at work. God was at work. He was using the jealousy and envy of the brothers to remove him from the family to another place so that he would prepare for their safety and security. You meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. What people mean and what God means. Somebody says to you, you will see. And God says, you will see. But they are, you will see, 
is not God's you will see. They mean you will see bad things. And God says, you will see my glory. You will see my power. You will see my goodness. You will see my favor. They declared it for one purpose, but God is using it to work out another purpose. Listen, never be afraid of man's hatred. Never be afraid of man's cruelty. Never be disturbed by those who hate you because God is working out all things for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And that is why the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So the next time you hear somebody say, hey, have you heard? They are planning, no. They are planning. They say you, they will finish you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, God is good. Have you heard? Hey, the, 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 this thing is not good. The, 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 the plans they have is not good. Have you heard? God is good. Oh, the letter just went and it's coming. It's being forwarded. It's coming to you. God is good. They got the big man on their side. God is good. That is the confession of the redeemed. In all circumstances, under all conditions, we declare God is good. And his mercies endure forever. They mean it for one thing. But God has another meaning for the same thing. And what was meant for evil, God will use it for good. This morning as we partake of communion, remember your God is good. That is why there is a good Friday. Because if you were there seeing Jesus whipped, torn into pieces, nailed to the cross, being mocked, you will say what a bad day. But what was meant to be a disgrace to the Son of God became the foundation on which he was glorified. What was meant for evil, God meant it for good. So as we partake of communion today, the prayer point we want to believe God for, for, to, for today's communion is that God would turn everything that was meant for evil to your good. Everything that has happened to you that you think is the worst thing that has happened, this morning, it is going to turn for your good. I said it's going to turn for your good because we know that all things work together for good. For those who belong to the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning as we get ready to partake of your table. As we get ready, Lord, for communion, we are fully convinced that all things are working together for our good. Things we know and things we don't know. Things we understand and things we don't understand. That your name will be glorified in our lives. And we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for this time of communion. Get ready with your emblems. Just with your emblems, lift them up as we bless the emblems. If you are new to church, you were given a package that has a small vial in it. Just lift it up. Just lift it up. If you don't have one, the ushers will give you one. Signal to them, they will give you one. Says, just lift it up. Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe, who has given us the earth, given us life. And out of the earth has produced for us this bread and this wine. We lift it up to you and sanctify it and set it apart from, for holy purposes. That as we partake of this bread and drink of this wine, you will minister to us your life and your goodness. And we pray today 
that as we covenant with you, everything that was meant for evil will be meant for our good. That it will turn to the good of God's people. May this week be a week of goodness. May the month of April be a month of goodness for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I give to you that which you have received that the Lord Jesus Christ, the night on which he was betrayed, he gave thanks, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. The same manner or so after they had eaten, he took the cup and blessed it and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth my death until I come. Do it in remembrance of me. Today as we eat this bread and this cup, we remember the Lord Jesus Christ who demonstrates the goodness of the Lord. And may the goodness of the Lord pursue us and overtake us in every situation of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift up your bread and say with me, Heavenly Father, I receive today the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for me. In his broken body, I am healed. I am well. And so I receive today health, wholeness, and healing in my body from the top of my head to the soles of my feet i declare life to me strength to me favor to me by the body of christ that has been resurrected i rise up above every scheme of wickedness what was meant for evil turns to my good in Jesus' name, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, take and eat. Now you take your cup. say with me heavenly father i receive today the body the blood of the lord jesus christ that was shed for me on calvary's cross this blood that speaks good things for me i receive every goodness of the blood of jesus as my covering from the top of my head to the soles of my feet I walk under the blood, I operate under the blood, I speak under the blood, my family is under the blood. And so today, I declare, the blessing of the blood of Jesus is mine, and whatever was meant for evil against me, turns into my good from today, in Jesus' name. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, take and drink. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 